Egyptian achievements. Egyptian writing. If you were reading a book and saw pictures of folded crop, cloth, a leg, a saw, a bird, and a man holding a stick, would you know what event you would if you were an ancient Egyptian in the Egyptian writing system or hieroglyphics? Those five symbols together meant to teach. Egyptian hieroglyphics were one of the world's first writing systems. Writing in ancient Egypt. The earliest known examples of Egypt writing are from around 3,300 BC. These early Egyptian writings are carved in stone or on other hand material. Later, the Egyptians learned material, learned how to make papyrus. A long-lasting paper-like material made from wheat. The Egyptians made papyrus by pressing layers of wheat together and pounding them into sheets. These sheets were tough and durable, yet easy to roll into scrolls. Scribes wrote on papyrus using brushes and ink. The hieroglyphic system used more than 600 symbols. Most pictures of objects, each symbol represented one or more sounds in the Egyptian language. For example, a picture of an owl represented the same sound as our M, letter M. Hieroglyphics could be written either horizontally or vertically. They could be written from left to right or from, from left to right. These options made hieroglyphics flexible to write but difficult to read. The only way to tell which way well the text is written is to look at individual symbols. Rosetta Stone Historians and archaeologists have known about hieroglyphics for centuries, but for a long time they didn't know on how to read them. In fact, it was not until 1799, when a lucky discovery by a French soldier gave historians the key they needed to read ancient Egyptian writing. That key was the Rosetta Stone, a stone slab inscribed with hieroglyphics. In addition to the hieroglyphics, the Rosetta Stone had text in Greek and a later form of Egyptian. Because the text in all three languages was the same, scholars who knew Greek figured out what the hieroglyphics said. Egyptian text, because populus did not decay in Egypt's dry climate, many Egyptian texts survive. Historians today could read Egyptian government and historical records since tech, science, <coughs> medical, manual, literacy works have also survived. We can read stories, poems, and mythological trails. Some texts, such as the Book of Dead, tell about the afterlife. Others include love poems and stories about gods and kings. Temples, tombs, and art. The Egyptians are famous for their architecture and art. The walls of Egypt's mag magnificent temples and tombs are covered with impressive paintings and carvings. Egyptians' great temples you already read about the Egyptians' most famous structures, the pyramids, but the Egyptians also built massive temples. Those that survive are among the most spectacular sites in Egypt today. The Egyptians believed that temples were the homes of gods. People visited the temples to worship offer the gods gifts and ask for favors. Many Egyptian temples shared similar features. Rows of stone sphinx, imaginary creature with bodies of lions, and the heads of other animals or humans lined the paths leading to the entrance. Itself was a huge thick gate 
Why do you look so old, okay? You might stand at obelisk, a tall four pillar that is pointed on top. Inside temples were lastly decorated, as you can see in the drawing of the Temple of Karnak. Huge columns supported the temple's roof. In many cases, these hieroglyphics are where the temple walls are the walls as well. The sanctuary, the most sacred part of the building, was at the far end of the temple. The temple of Karnak is only one of Egypt's great temples. Others were built by Ramses the Great at Abu Semel and Luxor. Part of what makes the temple at Abu Simbel so impressive is that it is carved out of sandstone cliffs. At the temple's entrance, four 60 foot, 66 foot tall statues show Ramses as Pharaoh. Nearby are some smaller statues of his family. Egyptian art. The ancient Egyptians were masterful artists. Egyptian painted lively. Colorful scenes on canvas, papyrus, pottery, plaster, and wood. Detailed works also covered the walls of temples and tombs. The temple art was created to honor the gods while the tomb art was intended for the enjoyment of the dead in afterlife. The subjects of Egyptian's paintings vary widely. Some paintings show important historical events, such as the crowning of kings and the founding of temples. Other illustrious major just right shows. Still other Paintings show scenes from everyday life, such as farming or hunting. Egyptian painting has a distinctive style. People's heads and legs are always seen from the side, but their upper bodies and shoulders are shown straight on. In addition, people do not always appear the same size. Important figures such as pharaohs appear huge in comparison to others. In contrast, Egyptian animals were usually done really realistically. Painting was not the only art form in which the Egyptians excelled. For example, the Egyptians were skilled stone workers. Many tombs included huge statues and detailed carvings on the wall. The Egyptians also made beautiful objects out of gold and precious stones. They made jewelry for both women and men. This includes necklace, collars, and bracelets. The Egyptians also used gold to make burial items for the pharaohs. Over the years, treasure hunters emptied many pharaohs' tombs. At least one tomb, however, was not disturbed. In in 1922, archaeologists found the tomb of King Tutankhamun, or King Tut. This tomb was filled with treasures, including jewelry, robes, a burial mask, and ivory statues. King Tut's treasures might have taught us much about Egyptian burial practices and beliefs.